Mary. I saw the banker today, and all I got was reasons why banks can't make small loans. Then what are we going to do, John? We must have money to meet those overdue grocery and doctor bills. I don't know, dear. But we'll find some way. You can roughly locate any community in the world, somewhere along a scale running all the way from democracy to despotism. What sort of community do you live in? This man makes it his job to study these things. Well, for one thing, avoid the comfortable idea that the mere form of government can of itself safeguard a nation. In order to have a proper appreciation of the American economic system, we must examine the distribution of the great wealth produced through the operation of American capitalism. Communities which concentrate decision-making in a few hands rate low on a power scale. I say, begging your pardon, sir, are you a capitalist? What do you say? Is the distribution widespread, or is the wealth of America concentrated in the hands of a few? To see how this wealth was distributed, Let's look at this graph. A community rates low on an information scale when the press, radio, and other channels of communication are controlled by only a few people. <laughs> if this condition exists over the nation as a whole, despotism stands a good chance. How is this income distributed among these families? Professor Gaines, aren't the majority of our families in the lower income brackets? You may be wondering, who got all this money? I would say it would be hundreds of billions. Actually, it's up in the trillions. In other words, what sort of community do you live in? Where would you place it on a democracy despotism scale? into a Walmart, Walmart store knocked shoppers to the ground near Grand Rapids, Michigan at 5 in the morning. Despite several people falling to the ground, shoppers charged ahead, fixated on door buster deals. <laughs> yeah. On your mark, get set, go! Okay, Gene, on him, give him a great start! <laughs> what shoppers these guys are! Look at them go! They're loading up on those big ticket items. The crowd's here this seconds we'll find out which team has the highest total and that team of course wins the chance to go for up to yes five thousand dollars in cash and prizes so stick around question de la marchandise c'est d'abord exercée d'une manière occulte sur l'économie qui elle-même en tant que base matérielle de la vie sociale restait inaperçue et incomprise comme le familier qui n'est pas pour autant connu le spectacle est le mauvais rêve de la société moderne enchaînée, qui n'exprime finalement que son désir de dormir. Le spectacle est le gardien de ce sommeil. Good evening. This is an extraordinary period for America's economy. Over the past few weeks, many Americans have felt anxiety about their finances and their future. The world economic situation is deteriorating more rapidly than we had thought. We are in the midst of a serious financial crisis. He has no idea how bad it is out there. He has no idea. He has no idea. Last night, demonstrators burned American currency in front of the White House. Here, folks, run around calling this.
class warfare. Just 1% of this country owns half our country's wealth. Th this is not class warfare. How many yachts can you water ski behind? How much is enough? The decline in the housing market set off a domino effect across our economy. Borrowers defaulted on their mortgages. And the gears of the American financial system began grinding to a halt. In six months, you'll see grass right over Rodeo Drive and Michigan Boulevard and Fifth Avenue. Despite corrections in the marketplace and instances of abuse, democratic capitalism is the best system ever devised. He's nuts! They're nuts! They know nothing! You can't wipe out the hand that's eating. We're essential and key to continual operation and continual smooth functioning of a highly industrialized, highly complicated machine. And we can use that power, you know, if we ever get ourselves sort of organized well enough destroy that machine or to take it over. It is the capitalist system that's on its way out of history. And it's, it's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, capitalism rests upon utilizing labor. It utilizes labor and the production of things. Its mode of accumulation, the way it works, is wage labor for money, money for things. Capitalism can work and maintain itself to a great degree as long as the system is expanding. Even as it goes through crisis, it still expands. It has reached the limit of its expansion, and what's bringing a crisis is a new technology regime, a new methods of production that are fundamentally laborless. When the Industrial Revolution began, it would take another, what, 100, 120, 30, 40 years to hit the second phase of the Industrial Revolution, which is roughly called Fordism. That's 150 years later. If we use as a benchmark the semiconductor as a benchmark, because the revolution begins in the late 30s, you know, and then into the 40s with the development of vacuum tube computers. But as a benchmark, let's use a semiconductor. Baby, it's only in its infancy. When something fundamental change in the means of production, the technology of a society, the society has to change. Nobody can stop that. Today we're experiencing the social consequences of 30, 40 years of subtle changes in the means of production. That is why you can't know how it works. You simply can't know it because you're a product of different circumstances. And that's why I'm glad you asked, and that's why I love you. The break came one day in December. Workers at the Fisher body plant punched in as usual. An ordinary day. Then something happened. Or rather, nothing happened. Nothing moved. The workers had sat down. They would not work, and they would stay in the factory until General Motors signed a contract with their union. The workers were startled to discover that they had actually stopped production. As the sit-down continued in Flint, Walter Ruther began calling support strikes in Oakland, California, Atlanta, Georgia, Kansas City, Missouri, Cleveland, Ohio, and Anderson, Indiana. Strikes paralyzed the General Motors operations nationwide. In Detroit, all nine Chrysler factories sat down, and Chrysler signed within a month. The second of the big auto companies had recognized the union. In one year's time, the membership of the UAW had grown to a quarter of a million strong, and a local business weekly declared, the revolution is here. Once we were weak, but now we stand tall. Millions of citizens heeding the call, demanding our freedom, the birthright of all. The Arab Spring turns to the American Fall. We're the 99, and we'll never forgive. We'll never forget how you've made us live. Expect us at your door. Prepare to defend. The reign of the moneyed and privileged now ends. Every 
every day of the year, the bull rides the people. Today, the people ride the bull. What this is, is the break from marching and chanting. We've been marching and chanting since the 60s. It's gotten us nowhere. This is an opportunity maybe for a new style, for a new shift in power and the way that people relate to each other. And, you know, like I say, I think we're fucked either way, but it's worth a shot. You could see this as like a micro society. It's a model for a new society. It's not a protest in the sense of being against something. Um, it, it's a way to formulate um, something new. Il faut radicaliser notre pratique, les occupations d'usines. Mais, mais c'est pas mal, mais c'est mieux avec séquestration. Directeur et cadre dans les placards, d'accord. Mais tout ceci ne fait pas avancer. Il nous faut des qualitatifs. Et un journal. Si on occupait un journal. Tu veux dire qu'on le sortirait nous-mêmes Pour faire connaître notre force Il y a aussi la radio. La télévision et tout. Tous les centres de communication. Comment peut-on les prendre El canal 9, el canal de los oaxaqueños, es una mentira. ¿Y por qué es una mentira? Porque a través de este canal jamás se ha escuchado, jamás se ha escuchado la voz y la verdad del pueblo. En mayo de 2006, esos 70 mil maestros representados por la sección 22, se pusieron en huelga, ocupando la ciudad capital de Oaxaca con un campamento conocido como Plantón. Esta fue la primera vez en 25 años que los maestros hicieron una huelga con su propia estación de radio, Radio Plantón. Se les hace un comunicado muy importante. En estos momentos se encuentra ya tomada las instalaciones del Canal 9 El canal del gobierno del estado, el, can el canal de Ulises Ruiz. Y esta toma fue completamente pacífica, si no me equivoco. Claro que sí, fue muy pacífica. Las mujeres solo eh, ya este, entraron aquí al canal, no golpearon a nadie, son puras mujeres. Llegamos aquí al interior y la que sale primero es la directora. Y le dijimos que queríamos que nos diera un espacio. Es que no se va a poder, no se va a poder. O sea, que todas las mujeres queríamos nada más un tiempo, una, una media hora. hora, una hora, y nosotros nos retirábamos, porque lo que queríamos era difundir un poquito de toda la verdad que existe, de tanta verdad que existe. A raíz de la programación que pasaba en el Canal 9, cuando ya las compañeras tomaron los micrófonos, entonces yo también pude darme cuenta, con tanta tarugada, yo me atontaba viendo novelas, me atontaba viendo programas que no valían la pena. Este es un derecho a la información, un derecho a la expresión libre, que, y nosotros estamos pidiendo que se nos respete ese derecho. We set up Global Revolution TV, a media defense force, which is not necessarily just connections with your local journalists, but ability to put out super high quality media of your insurrection. We're going to be sending in a tactical media kit, which will consist of laptops, cameras, and broadcast equipment. By building efficient communications tools and having giving people ability to edit the channel from anywhere in the world, we are creating a basically a global TV network. Thanks, Vlad.
weekend, a few troublemakers turned a peaceful protest against Wall Street greed into a violent burst of chaos. The troublemakers carried pepper spray and guns and were wearing badges. We are rocking and rolling into history, baby. Yes. Protesters rallied uh, towards the Brooklyn Bridge. When they got on the Brooklyn Bridge, the police showed up and uh, basically cornered off both sides of the Brooklyn Bridge and started to move in on the protesters to make arrests for blocking the traffic and disorderly conduct. This is a peaceful march. This is a peaceful march. They are just openly embracing their demonic aspect. Capitalists, if you think that you can play footsies with these people, you're wrong. They will come for you and drag you into the streets and kill you. Let me, let me now take that and for a brief moment describe Occupy Wall Street. Pepper spray, pe 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 pepper, pepper spray. That just burns your eyes, right? We kept asking the simple question, why are you here? Why are you the here? failure, the failure of the Occupy Wall Street movement. <laughs> They're attacking anything and everything. Right. That's right. Thing. And pepper spray. There's this vacuum of leadership or ideology or anything that they're out there for. Pepper spray. Don't blame Wall Street. Don't blame the big banks. If you don't have a job and you're not rich, blame yourself. You None of these kids at Occupy Wall Street are coming from places like Yale. A feet, elite, university, fancy pants. Pepper spray. They're angry about everything. There's this just visceral hatred of Fox yeah. News. They're they brainless. Don't. They're brainwashed. And these people are highly scripted. People defecating, defecating on, on police, police cars. cars. And they know how to agitate. You can tell it is just on the edge of violence. These guys are worse than Robespierre from French the French Revolution. Revolution. The more blood there is, the more these people are sated. Polarity and revulsion. Pe 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 pepper, pepper spray. It's a food product, essentially. It's difficult to escape noticing that the Occupy movement is officially backed by the American Nazi Party, the American Communist Party, the Workers' World Party, the Democratic Party, and the President of the United States of America. I am glad to be a Disney World. Pepper spray. The Magic Kingdom. Dozens and dozens of complaints and rapes and murders and all sorts of disgusting activity taking place. Would you prefer that your daughter demonstrate with the Tea Party people or with the occupiers? You make the call remembering the hypodermic needle. Socialists, communists, and anarchists. It was a rat problem. Anti-Semitic graffiti. A possible ringworm outbreak. Gotta get them out of here. Denver police say they were forced to open fire. Forced open fire. They ended up making 20 arrests on Saturday night, and that's what they're trying to do, is to poke and prod the police in order to have a Kent State moment. The damage is done, and repairs are not cheap. That's right, Jim. $86,000 is a lot of money. Once the chaos died down, we kept asking the simple question, why are you here? What's your message? This is what the organizer of this entire event told us. Pe 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 pepper spray. That just burns your eyes, right? of the great and powerful Oz. I said, come back tomorrow. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Well, your Hello. latest book is about debt, the history of debt, um, and you're also known for Occupy Wall Street. What does um, Occupy Uprising have to do with debt? Everything. <laughs> um, actually, I was kind of astounded because I thought, here I am doing this book, but I'm going to try to keep it apart from the activist stuff, you know, because I don't want to get it mixed up. And everywhere I went, people, you know, talking about debt, people were like, can you start a movement about this? You know, maybe student loans. Maybe My feeling is that capitalism has fundamentally shifted from something which used to have some relation to manufacturing and making and selling things to basically an extractive system where capitalists receive the right to make up money from the government. So what this has to do with capitalism as classically defined, I have no idea why we're even really calling it that. It's it's a more a system of almost feudal appropriation. We were just startled when, you know, A, we got to hold the park. And on the first day, I was a little, you know, we only have a couple hundred people here. 
just grew and it grew and by the time we went to the park there was about 2,000 um, and suddenly it was like wow we kept it. Uh, revolutionary movements never swell like that in the country that's actually you know the center of global capitalism. You think it's a global uprising? Yeah. I mean it didn't start here it passed through here but when you know it's almost as if when it Views hit America, that's when it blew up because it was impossible to disguise that something global was really happening. And uh, last question, how does it feel to be the leader of the Occupy Wall Street? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say, I'd say, it's, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing to be the leader as long as, like, we have a couple million more. The city's powerful unions are set to join the Occupy Wall Street demonstration now entering its 20th day. Their march to City Hall will be bolstered by the walkout of hundreds, potentially thousands of students at major public universities in New York City where tuition rates are on the rise. We're standing in the march from the union rally to the Occupy Wall Street encampment where somewhere along Broadway thousands, tens of thousands of people are marching. They said they needed to rescue Wall Street and the big three automakers to stimulate the economy. And that meant jobs. Three years later, there's still no jobs. Excuse me, Vanessa, how does it feel to be walking? Vanessa? Uh, yes. How does it feel to be walking? Uh, I do wish someone would carry me, but it's okay. What do you think about their sign? to think about it. I think this is it. The rev has started, man. Rev it up. Rev, rev, rev. Hey, we're in the middle of a revolution because I see the face of things to come. I think we got caught up in the traffic somehow. I don't know what happened, but our, our ride was... Uh, inconvenienced and stuck at the traffic light with all of these people, so we had to end up walking with them. We're going to go ask some people what their sign means, actually. This, we are learning. Our sign says, fuck plastic, which refers to a lot of different stuff. Plastic people, plastic credit cards, and just general excess. About something, I can't quite figure it out. moments when thousands or even millions of people surge into the streets and refuse to leave to return to their everyday lives until significant shifts are made in the social order. These moments accomplish in days what history takes years and even decades to accomplish. I first developed the concept of the Eros Effect doing research about the movements of 1968 and I saw how in every country where there were movements, these movements were related to each other much more than they were related to specific national conditions. In these moments of the Eros effect, the popular reality 
is reconstructed by thousands of people who change their everyday lives. Instead of values like patriotism, hierarchy, or competition being the dominant values, people construct new values of solidarity, of humanity, of love for each other. Relations among human beings have a very different quality and different feel to them. These moments of the Eros effect indicate that ordinary people acting together by the millions have a far greater intelligence than the elites that run society. Territory. Occupy protests are reported in more than a hundred cities from coast to coast. We are the city. We are the city. Occupy the Hood is a movement that was born out of Occupy Wall Street in solidarity with Occupy Wall Street. It's a movement to try to encourage and motivate more people of color to get involved in this movement. Calls for economic equality also spread this weekend to Mobile, Alabama. Hunger and greed is everywhere. It's a, you know, we're losing our middle class. The streets of Indianapolis. I want to get out that the American people had better wake up or we'll lose our whole democracy. Signs and tents are going up in a new camp in the Columbia Gorge town of Mosier between Hood River and the Dalles. Mosier is so small that the Occupy Portland camp is likely larger than the entire population of this town. They say that Mosier represents small town America and how big corporations and politicians have ignored the needs of people no matter where they live. As the world watches us occupy Wall Street, let's not forget the history of occupation on which this street was built. In 1685, the Dutch West India Company enslaved African peoples after failing to effectively enslave American Indians. To construct a wall, Wall Street, that barricaded the land white men had seized from native peoples. The Dutch called their colony New Amsterdam and needed to secure it from the indigenous who were fighting to take back land they had sustained for thousands of years. Change comes with time, it's not an action, it's a process. It's more than just marching, it's what you do after the protest. It's giving back to the hood, that makes you conscious. What makes an activist activate when they graduate with a bachelor's or a master's from the masters with the masters screaming master. Master all the answers when they've mastered it. We can try to shape the world, if we can try to change how we imagine it. It's okay to make mistakes, but if freedom's what they say, we don't have time to waste. Occupy Wall Street movement spread to at least 85 cities on six continents today. Young people standing up for what they believe. 
believe in just as we saw on TV in Egypt. I think it's really cool that people are getting together for what they actually believe in, not just in Portland, but also like in Seattle and other places. I think they have purposefully uh, not defined specific demands they're more stating their grievances. Some of the amazing positive things I'm seeing coming out of it is the practice of democracy. I just came from the general meeting and uh, although it can seem like it's working slowly because they let everybody be heard, they do let everybody be heard. It is going to send a message to the people in the government that, you know, get off their butts, start talking to each other, and quit this logjam of political uh, game and shit. Today's secret word is anarchism, a social philosophy which aims at the emancipation, economic, social, political, and spiritual of the human race. And who is your lord? We don't have a lord. What? I told you, we're an anarcho-syndicalist commune. For a lot of people, working in affinity groups is an important part of building a non-hierarchical movement. So it means that you can work in a big group but without leaders. People feel more empowered if they're working in a group rather than working on their own or working as part of a huge group of a hundred people or a thousand people where it's possible to get a little lost. Affinity group is a very kind of broad term for people working together for a common goal and with common outlines of the way that they're going to act. An affinity group can be you're a bunch of five friends and you work together and you organize together. An affinity group can be a group of people who you just met and have decided to go into an action with the same intention and the same ground rules. First of all, the Black Bloc is a tactic. Like any other tactic, it cannot be judged in itself but can only be judged as part of a spectrum of a much broader movement. And we can't romanticize or generalize either way, right? So tactics can be effective, they can be ineffective, but inherently they are, they are neither. Secondly, there is a dichotomy that has been created between so-called community day-to-day -day organizing and insurrectionary actions. Because it's all been reduced to whether window smashing is effective or not. And I think that, as a starting point, is fundamentally problematic. Um, the Black Bloc has various utilities, both defensive and offensive, including de-arresting comrades and the very basic principle of no comrade left behind. We're asking the wrong side the question about violence. If we're going to talk about violence, we need to be talking about the military, we need to be talking about the police, we need to be talking about the state. Shut up, will you shut up? Ah, now we see the violence inherent in the system. See. The only way that you keep people involved in a movement like this is you have a process in which everyone's voice can be heard. When you want to show support to something that you're hearing, you twinkle. This, which is the point of process, when someone is getting off topic. I disagree. Clearing fine question. <laughs> this is the block. Every decision has been made through our process of general assemblies and through our process of working. And that's the beauty of direct democracy. The process is meant. The process is meant. So you can be empowered. So you can be empowered. To go to your own community. To go to your own community. And hold general assemblies. And hold general assemblies. To talk about. To talk about. To talk about. The issues. The issues. All the decisions of that officer have to be ratified at a special bi-weekly meeting. Yes, I see. By a civil majority in the case of purely internal affairs. Be quiet. But by a two-thirds majority in the case of more Be quiet. I order you to be quiet. Order, who does he think he is? <laughs> I'm your king. Well, I didn't vote for you. E I think direct action is a way to reclaim your life. So, on the one hand, it's about directly intervening where something's going wrong, or to do something right. Uh, so that could be shutting down a company which is polluting, or it could be uh, directly providing food or shelter through squatting or food not bombs kind of actions. 
um, but it's also about reclaiming your life, about saying we're not going to wait for politicians, we're not going to wait for leaders, we're not going to wait for the establishment to do things, we're going to do it ourselves. Direct action happens because there is a need for it, Direct action happens because people are fighting back and we're not waiting for millions of people to stand beside us for the revolution to happen. As the chaos subsided, this new revolutionary society began to function. Much of the Catalan economy was now being run by the workers themselves. In Barcelona, trams and cinemas, factories, department stores and even greyhound tracks were run by their own employees. Barter, not purchasing, kept Barcelona fed for the first weeks of the Civil War. In some places, money itself, seen by anarchists as inherently evil, was abolished. The California National Guard has been ordered into active service by our governor for the purpose of maintaining law and order in San Francisco and protecting life and property. This we propose to do at any cost. For those of you guys who do not know, the police came to Occupy Oakland at 4.30 in the morning. The police tear gassed the front of Occupy Oakland, uh, the 14th and Broadway side. They flashbanged the media tent and stopped the um, live stream. At that point, the police moved in and started rubber bulleting people, shooting rubber bullets indiscriminately. <laughs> Part of the Oakland General Strike, we will march on the Port of Oakland and shut it down. We will converge at 5 p.m. at 14th and Broadway and march to the port to shut it down before the 7 p.m. night shift. Yo. We the 99, the 99, the 99%. We here, we arrived, and we came to represent. We the 99, the 99, the 99%. We here, we arrived, and we came to represent. For the people, for the teachers, for the students. If we knew that, just 1% of these dudes own two thirds of the US. So we are the 99, we are the 99. London, they set it off. In Santiago, they march. Well, over here, it's time we start building a mass consensus. Your daddy lost his pension. Your daughter's school need fixing. Your brother's back in prison. The lesson here ain't kumbaya. Like overnight, the change will come. Nah, but what they got, we 
got 99, they got one problem and it's us If we wake up from that slumber then that number make more sense to us all Some small group of bankers whose wealth go back ages Stay trying to enslave us, divide and contain us Make us strangers, more anger, pit us against our neighbors But in the face of hatred, we show sure love can change things The 99, the 99, the 99% we here, we arrived, and we came to represent We the 99, the 99, the 99 percent Oh, occupy halfway, wait, oh, occupy halfway Today we have our strike, so we started bringing out rugs and tables and chairs and we have pianos and we set up our open university so we have a chalkboard and we have a library right behind me. I've been waiting for this for a long time. A, a real upright a movement like this. You know, they, there's a lot of people in this country who have a lot to protest, a lot of reason to protest. I wish Abby Hoffman were, were here now. He'd love this. What had begun in March 1968 as a student revolt at Nanterre on the outskirts of Paris, by May had become a nationwide protest against the French political regime. Major factories were closed down by strikes, and in Paris, students occupied the University of the Sorbonne. For the moment then, calm and even gaiety here in Nîmes with the students back in the university and in complete control of the place. They've even set up their own committees to organize their lectures and what they're going to do next. By the In a general assembly that took place at 4.30 last night, the protesters agreed to reconvene on the UC Davis quad early this afternoon. The chancellor has ordered officers not to enforce the overnight camping policy. No arrests will be made this evening unless circumstances change dramatically by morning. After holding a general assembly at noon, protesters mobilized and occupied Dutton Hall. Literally, we were like a little group with our arms locked together. People just started showing up in, and like more and more, the cops couldn't hold us off. They took the tents and shit, but uh, but like we've been holding down for hours, hours. Come. Yeah, you want to see me, sir? Ah, Constable Savage, come in. Shut the door. Now then, Savage, I want to talk to you about some charges that you've been bringing lately. I think that perhaps you're being a little overzealous. Which charges do you mean, then, sir? Well, for instance, this one. I'm Dolly Rainey, and my fame stems from a big mistake the Seattle cops made when they pepper sprayed me. Did they teach you anything at training school? I have not been read my rights. I have not been told why I'm being detained. And we have some more here. <laughs> and this one. Oh, what the fuck? Savage, maybe you're not aware of this, but it is not illegal to use a pedestrian crossing. Do you say so, sir? Yes, I do say so, Savage. Some of these cases are just plain stupid. <laughs> You, that give the police a bad name. The press love to jump on incidents like this, and the reputation of the force can be permanently tarnished. Your time on duty is dominated by racial hatred and petty personal vendettas. Did you get some, some kind of perverted gratification from going around stirring up trouble? Yes, sir. There's no room for men like you in my force, Savage. Now get out! Sorry, sir. Oh, it's behind us! <laughs> showing up, uh, everything's possible. It's very exciting. Seeing people, this, this influx of spirit and support and just sheer mass. My socks are blown off. This is like one of the most exciting things I've ever been a part of. In 
1932, Washington was under siege. The capital was surrounded by over 10,000 unemployed veterans of World War I from all over the country. The marchers had stayed, camped out in central Washington. Their only assets were the bonus certificates they'd been given after the war, which promised a cash bonus sometime in the future. President Hoover was left to deal with the veterans when the Senate rejected their demands. It's war. The greatest concentration of fighting troops in Washington since 1865. I'd never seen anything like it. They systematically went down the line, burned up all the tents and all the possessions of the people there. The orders of the president must be obeyed. And the roaring flames sound the death knell to the fantastic bonus army. In the shadow of the beautiful dome of the capital of the United States of America. It's halftime. Both teams are in their locker room discussing what they can do to win this game in the second half. People are out of work and they're hurting. And we're all scared because this isn't a game. I've seen a lot of tough eras, a lot of downturns in my life, times when we didn't understand each other. The fog of division, discord, and blame made it hard to see what lies ahead. We find a way through tough times, and if we can't find a way, then we'll make one. This country can't be knocked out with one punch. We get right back up again, and when we do, the world's gonna hear the roar of our engines. Yeah, it's halftime America, and our second half's about to begin. Now, the politicians may not have taken bold action, but tonight, Americans are. ABC News has learned that as of today, one million American consumers are hurling a lightning bolt warning at the big banks, moving their money out in protest. It started early this morning at 7 a.m., uh, gathering at Liberty Plaza, and in different affinity groups converged on Wall Street to try different zigzag routes to get to the stock exchange. We're not able to disrupt the opening bell, but they did shut down Wall Street. By 3 p.m., there was a massive gathering of students who walked out on strike from colleges and universities from all over the city. The students took the streets all the way down to Foley Square. All day, all week, occupy Wall Street. After the uh, demonstration at Foley Square, students, occupiers, union members took to the Brooklyn Bridge. The police scanner uh, estimate for the crowd on the Brooklyn Bridge was 32,500 people. Do you get a lot of junk mail? I do. Inside every one of these credit card offers is one of these. It's a business reply mail envelope. They only pay postage on the envelopes that get mailed back. Now the banks are assuming that we'll use these envelopes to send in our credit card applications, but we don't want more credit cards, do we? We certainly don't want them from the big banks that caused the financial crisis. Just take all the materials that came in the envelope, put them in there. Take the envelope itself, put that in there. And then any other junk mail you got that day that you think might be interesting to them, like I got this baby products catalog, I'll put that in there. I mean, bankers have babies, and being immoral doesn't mean you're infertile. The other thing that I do is I send them a note. This one says, hello, big bank clerk, please join a union. If you're willing to put a little bit of money into it, and I do mean a little bit, would be a wood shim. 
put the shin in the envelope and suddenly the envelope becomes really heavy and more importantly a rigid mail piece costs more in postage to mail if they start getting hundreds and thousands of weird responses to their credit card applications well they're going to have to have meetings. Every hour banks spend reacting to us, it's an hour banks don't spend foreclosing on our houses. So I think that that's progress. Empty homes were the target of this latest protest by the Occupy Wall Street movement. In this case, their attention was focused on four homes abandoned or foreclosed in an area of New York they say is among the worst hit by the financial crisis. Alfredo Carrasquillo and his family were among the protesters. They've taken up residence in one of the district's vacant properties. The protesters threw a housewarming party to press home their demands for fewer repossessions and more affordable housing. We took um, matters, matters into our own hands and claimed back property that was taken away from the community. Boa tarde. A direção do Movimento Sem Terra está passando aqui convidando os companheiros. Olha, a direção do Movimento Sem Terra. Aí a gente está convidando o companheiro se se interessar a ganhar um pedaço de terra que nós vamos fazer mais ocupação por aqui. Aí a gente vai explicar a você. A mudança que a gente tem de movimento de terra para oferecer para vocês é fazendo a ocupação de terra, desapropriando as terras e assentando vocês e vocês produzindo. O Guerreiro lá fora fala que nós invadimos, mas nós não invadimos não, né? nós ocupamos a fazenda, se a fazenda foi improdutiva. O fazendeiro não está fazendo renda nenhuma nela para os trabalhadores para cultivar a terra. Em outros momentos da história já houveram conflitos, houveram massacres. Teve o massacre da Santa Elmira, que foi um longo processo de ocupação e despejo, ocupação e despejo, ocupação e despejo, em que lá pelo final desse processo as famílias tomaram a decisão de que iam para o confronto, dada a morosidade da reforma agrária naquele período. Em 1985, quando o Brasil estava lutando por eleições diretas para o presidente, the MST held its first national congress in Curitiba, in the south of Brazil. The movement's motto became, to occupy is the only solution. I've been a textile mill worker for 20 years. Today, I am doing more work and getting less pay than I ever did before. We are asking for a general strike to keep organized labor on the Pacific coast. We're not only asking for it, but we're going to get it. Ports are important because um, it's one place where the 1% amasses their wealth. They are the place where goods and services are exchanged. It's this hub of production and distribution. There's an inter interesting connection between the local and the international here too, where we're not only uh, fighting for local worker struggles and for the local economy and local workers in general, but also the ports are a hub of international commerce and we see that multinational corporations have engaged in a global race to the bottom, pitting workers in different countries against each other, uh, engaging in sweatshop activities. The ports are a hub of capitalism and today we're going to shut it down. If you're gonna start a To reinforce the line! To reinforce the line! I can remember what my mama used to say. Hey! And if we stick together, then we'll win this fighting time. As long as we don't want to cross each other, sing it live. There's so many interests that come kind of in focus right here at the ports. And so if we all can come out from uh, the occupying movement all along the coast, that's a major statement of us in solidarity. Is this doing anything? They're not doing anything. Well, not too much. They've stopped all the trucks for it, so let's close it down.
Yo, dude, you know what's happening today? Tell me. I, I don't know. I was just wondering. There's like all these people out. I was on a bike ride with a bunch of my friends, but this is kind of like something really exciting is going on. I, I, I saw a lot of Alex signs or something. What? Is, like, like, is that a name of some dude or something? Or? I don't know. It's the American Legislative Exchange Council. It's essentially a lobby that's fit into by corporations all over the country, and it undermines our democracy. While McDonald's is making money off of death, we're actually here giving life-giving food uh, and charging nothing for it. Alex is bad for our health because they control our food supply. They've genetically altered everything from our plants to cloning our animals that we eat. And they don't label it because they pass legislation saying they don't have to. We understand that the people who are profiting off of these bills, off of these uh, laws, are also the ones that are helping write the legislation and that needs to come out. But our democracy is not for sale.
What sort of community do you live in? Where would you place it on a democracy despotism scale? Today, democracy can ebb away in communities whose citizens allow power to become concentrated in the hands of bosses. <laughs> the test of despotic power is that it can disregard the will of the people. It rules without the consent of the governed. What happens in a single community is the problem of its own citizens. But it is also the problem of us all. Because as communities go, so goes the nation.